Hello, it's James Arter here. I hope you're doing really well. So today I wanted to talk about the basics of using track stacks in Logic. There's a bunch of ways that you can use them and I wanna show you a few things that you might find useful. So if you're interested, stick around, I'll show you what I do. As always, I would love it if you can hit the old like and a subscribe and notification bell and I'll let you know of some upcoming videos when they come out. Also, if you want some free stuff, sign up to the mailing list below. I'll send you an EQ cheat sheet, which is really useful for mixing and also some one shot drum samples that you can use in your mixes. Hooray. Okay, so the first way to use track stacks is essentially to group together any audio or MIDI tracks. It can be a really good way to just keep things nice and tidy, especially when you've got a whole bunch of tracks on the screen, but you can also use it to sum the tracks together. So I'm just gonna show you very quickly the first way, and this is concentrating on audio, but it can be MIDI too. Right, so as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of tracks here. Everything you see here that's green, and then also sort of yellowy green are all guitars. I do like guitars in songs, so I tend to have a lot of guitars going on. Um, in fact, this is quite a humble amount. There's often quite a lot more. But anyway, as sessions go, this isn't as crazy busy and cluttered as it could be. But regardless, it's nice to keep it tidy. So let's have a look at what we can do with the track stacks in this case, just to tidy up the screen. Now, the first way is with all of these guitars, you'll notice I've actually got each pair of guitars coming into a separate auxiliary. So over here, we've got guitars one and two. They're like the main guitars. They're coming into guitars one. Great, so, and then I've got chorus guitars, which are coming into a different one there. And then I'm adjusting the levels separately via the auxiliaries, which is great. So in that case, if I highlight all of these guitars, right click and choose create track stack, then you've got two options here. Now with this first option, just doing folder stack, it's gonna keep all of my auxiliaries in place and it's not gonna change the routing of these guitars. They're all just gonna be going to the exact places where I set them up already. So I hit create and now it's turned into one subgroup. There we go. So we can call that guitars, makes sense. Can even make them all green if we like. There we go, because guitars are green. If they're not green, then they sound weird. So now we've got all of those guitars in that track stack. They're all still going to their individual outputs that I've set up. So I've still got that control over there, or I can just control the actual volumes of the individual tracks if I like, but it means that I can hide them if I don't need to see them at any point. There we go. And it's all nice and tidy, lovely, but I still do have some control. I can still mute or solo them like I would do over here. And this volume control is now essentially a VCA. So it's bringing the level of all the guitars down, but, it, but they're not going into the same channel. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. The other way would be if we do it this way and choose summon stack. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. Now, all of those guitars are coming through the same auxiliary. So they're no longer going out of those individual outputs that I set up. Now they're all coming to the same place. As you can see, so it's created a bus. This is bus 12, all of them going into bus 12 there. And then I can do whatever I like to this channel. I can treat it as if it were an auxiliary because it is. So you can add different plugins and you can do whatever you like and you can still adjust the individual volumes. So there you go, really, really useful. And there are lots of ways that you might wanna use this. Like one of the main ways might be to use it for a drum kit. A drum kit will often have, you know, 10, 15, whatever channels in there. And you can have them all coming through the same place and have a little bit of control over everything at the same time. Really handy and it keeps things nice and tidy. Now let's look at another option. Now this one is MIDI based. So you might have multiple MIDI tracks that are all using the same performance. So you might be layering up three or four synths, which are all using the same part, but the same part is playing different synths. Or maybe you're layering up a piano part and you've got two different pianos that are kind of working together. There are lots of different things you can do. I'm gonna show you an option with drums. So right at the top here, I've got a drum track. Sounds like this. Beautiful. Now what I'm gonna do is create another drum track. And what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially gonna use this to layer it up. So in the same way, like I was saying, you could have it like so, where you've got, you're just basically playing the same part. So I've copied the main drum part and I've pasted it below to the additional kit. But what we can do is if we create a track stack, 
There we go, create track stack. And as before, yeah, we can just go for a folder stack if you like, and it's just gonna essentially tidy them up and keep them all together. But if we go to summon stack, then you can do something a little bit cool with this. So now we can see we've got my summon stack on the top here, and we've got our two drum kits, okay? We can hide them or make them reappear just like that. But now what we can do is we actually don't need both of the MIDI parts. We can just drag this main MIDI part up to the main track stack lane, and that's gonna be now sending the same thing to both MIDI parts. So if you've got four different drum kits here or four different synths, it's going to be all playing back from the exact same MIDI part, which is really handy. But you still have control over both. So as an example, what I'm going to do with one of these drum kits, this is actually quite a cool thing you can do. So this is like an, this is an added bonus tip for you. Something just to make your drums chubbier. I'm going to go and find a kit. I'm going to find something a bit aggressive. Okay, so I've got a nice aggressive kit there. That's a smash kit, which is quite a cool logic kit. I suggest you check it out if you haven't already. And it sounds like this. Beautiful. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it even more aggressive. Okay, that is really getting quite filthy now. And we can just mix that into my original kit. So we're gonna just start with that original kit and then I'm gonna start to bring it in underneath. Now, as you can see, we can really overdo it if we want. But we don't wanna do that. We actually just wanna give those drums a little bit more spice. So here we go. And there you go. I mean, there are endless possibilities, but the main thing to take away here is this MIDI part, you're now just using to control the whole lot. Nice and easy, nice and tidy. You can hide them away when you like, just like that. And you still have individual control over the tracks that are coming through this stack. One thing to note, especially if you're doing this with drums, is if you have drums which are multi-output, these ones are just stereo at the moment, but if you're using ones which are multi-output, then you'll only be able to use the folder version. You won't be able to use a sum in stack for this. So something to just bear in mind if you're looking to do that. Okay, cool. And there we go. There's just a few ideas of how you can use track stacks in Logic. How do you use them? Why don't you leave some comments below and we can start a bit of a dialogue about it. Okay, thanks very much for coming. I had a lovely time. Bye for now.